Caustic's tactical ability, the Nox Gas Trap. They normally activate and produce gas when shot, or if you get too close to them. To get rid of them safely, don't shoot them in the middle. Shoot them at the gold ring at the very bottom. That actually quickly nullifies the trap, makes them disappear. Lifeline's tactical ability, the Dock Heal Drone. It can actually heal anyone, even enemies, not just allies. If you kill an enemy lifeline who was healing up, take it for yourself. You earned it. When parkouring over walls and ledges, you can actually pause at the top of your climb and look around before going up and over the ledge. You can do this to check for danger up ahead without exposing the majority of your body. You can climb doors as a way of getting to higher ground. Not a problem if you're Pathfinder, but if you're not, it's helpful to get to higher places without needing to look for a staircase first. Helmets reduce incoming headshot damage. The amount of damage reduced depends on the tier of your helmet. White helmets reduce incoming headshot damage by 10%, blue tier is by 20%, and purple or gold tier will reduce it by 25% overall. Protect your noggin forehead. Despite what it might feel like, all characters in the game move at the same speed. In terms of running, no one character is faster than another. That was actually confirmed by one of the senior game designers at Respawn on Twitter. Again, it might feel like some characters are a little slower because they have a higher camera height and a slower arm moving animation. Speaking of character height, it's also been confirmed that for the time being, characters in Apex have different hitbox sizes. Wraith is the tiniest character in the game and therefore has the smallest hitbox, making her a harder target to hit overall. Gibraltar currently has the biggest hitbox in the game and is overall a 140% larger target than Wraith. Yikes. Not every character in the game has the exact same recharge time for their tactical ability and their ultimate ability. The following chart comes courtesy of allgamers.com. Pathfinder and Mirage have the fastest recharge time on the tactical ability side at 15 seconds each. Lifeline's ultimate has the longest cooldown in the game at 6 minutes, meanwhile Wraith and Caustic's ultimates only take 2 and a half minutes to fully recharge, and Pathfinder's zipline is the fastest in the game at 1 minute and 30 seconds. Putting down your weapon will make you run faster than you normally would if you had your weapon out. I think most players know that already, but you should also know that sliding while running makes you go even faster. And not just when you're going downhill. Even on flat ground, occasionally sliding when running pushes you forward faster. And that's true for if you have your weapon out or not. There's no fall damage in Apex, but when you hit the ground after a big fall, there are landing and animation frames that slow you down a little bit before you're able to start running again. If you melee just before you hit the ground, you will essentially bypass those frames and you'll be able to start running much faster when you hit the ground. It's pretty easy to mess this up though, you have to work on the timing. You can block doors by standing in front of them. That can be pretty handy if you're trying to prevent an enemy from coming inside to an area where you and your teammates are trying to recover. Remember, you can open doors and close doors and block them even when you're downed. For any edgy, caustic mains out there, his tactical gas traps can also block doors on their own. Not a bad idea to place one or two down to block a door at the beginning of the game when you're scrambling around to grab loot in a hot area. By doing that, you can prevent enemy players from running into the same building that you're in and ganking your weapons. If you want to get through a door that happens to be blocked either by a player or by an object, remember you might not be able to open it, but you can destroy the door. Explosions work, or better yet, you can just kick the door down with two melee hits. That will work even if an enemy is standing right there blocking the way. Bruce Lee that some bitch and get in there. Gold tier helmets, backpacks, and revive shields don't offer anything different in terms of regular stat bonuses. And by that, I mean the gold body armor provides you 100 armor points, which is the same as the purple tier body armor. The gold helmet offers 25% headshot damage reduction, which is the same as purple tier. Each gold gear gives a unique individual benefit. The body shield allows you to
to completely regenerate your shields after performing an execution on a downed enemy. Executions are tricky to pull off because by nature you're performing them while members of the enemy team are still alive. The Golden Helmet gives you a faster tactical and ultimate ability recharge, which is huge. The Backpack, probably my favorite of the bunch, allows you to use healing items 50% faster than normal. Finally, the Golden Knockdown Shield gives you the ability to revive yourself when knocked one time. If you get the Golden Knockdown Shield, be very careful and smart about when you use it. If your team looks like they've already won the firefight, maybe let them pick you up. But if your team is under heavy fire, looks like you're about to lose, may be activated. Wiggle around while looting. After wiping an enemy team, you do the usual deal. Run in and loot the bodies, but while you're looting, try to strafe around back and forth. This is just in case there's another team nearby aiming at you while you're looting, unbeknownst to you. Strafe back and forth. Don't give them a free headshot. In a game like Apex, remember ABW. Always be wiggling. Some weapons have different shot patterns when ADS as compared to when in hip fire. The Mozambique triangle pattern is far wider when hip fired and much tighter when ADSing. And the same thing goes for the Mastiff legendary shotgun. Wide pellet spread when hip firing and a tighter pellet spread when ADSing. The Peacekeeper and the Evo 8, however, with no attachments, have the same pattern and tightness no matter which way you fire the weapon. Damage numbers in Apex are color coded to help you know what kind of damage you're doing to the enemy and how much protection your enemy has. Headshot damage numbers are golden and body shots will match the enemy's shield type, purple, blue, or white. Red damage indicates that that enemy no longer has shields. You can also hear the sound of a shield breaking when you've destroyed it. After wiping an enemy team, before healing or replenishing your shields, check your enemy's death crate first. Even though you just ripped the enemy to pieces, body armor is always going to be picked up at full shield capacity. So rather Rather than wasting time and wasting resources recharging your own damaged shield, you can pick up and equip a fresh set of armor from your dead enemy, provided, of course, they have the same level of armor you had on, or better. That only works with fresh enemies, by the way. You can't just drop your own armor into a death crate and then re-pick it up at full shield capacity. That would be dumb. There are ways to tell when an engagement with the enemy team is over and every member of the enemy team is dead. The easy the easiest way to tell, of course, is that the enemy you just beat doesn't get knocked down, they just flat out die. If your teammate is fighting the last player though, and you don't see it happening, you can still tell due to the team wipe audio cue. When you hear that, it means that the team has been eliminated. Once there are nine players left on the field, the player count number will be hidden. There's kind of a way to keep track of it though. If you saw what the number was right before the feed went from four teams to three, remember that number, and then subtract by one every time the squad's left icon flashes red, because that means a player just died. I mean, you can also see it in the kill feed when a player dies, but I think watching the red flash is a little bit easier. Hard to keep track of in the middle of a fight, but if you can, you'll know exactly how many enemies are left at all times. Minus your team, of course. Respawn zones are one-time use only, and I don't just mean for your team, I mean for everyone. After reviving a teammate with the respawn zone, it gets taken away for all teams until the match is over. Make sure you keep that in mind when deciding which respawn zone to use on a friend. The ping system in Apex is incredibly helpful, and you should use it all the time. You know what's annoying? When a teammate pings a really good piece of gear and you're like, hey, you know what? I'll get that in a minute. And then after a minute, you forget where the gear was, right? Wrong. If a teammate pings something very important that you really want to pick up, be sure to look at the item on your HUD and ping it back. Doing that will guarantee that the object your friend pinged for you will not eventually disappear after a little bit of time has gone by. Makes keeping track of gear on the map much, much easier. Every weapon in Apex is projectile based, even though it may not seem like it right away. Bullet travel time is more noticeable at longer ranges. The further away
away you are, the more you'll have to lead enemies to land shots. The only weapon which breaks this rule is the relatively new Havoc Rifle, but only in its select single fire mode where it can fire long range shots. That is confirmed the only hitscan weapon in the game that offers instant bullet travel time. The Hot Zone isn't the only location on the map with high tier loot. The Hot Zone will have the highest possible chance at finding a fully kitted out gun, aka a gold version of non-legendary gear weapons which already have top tier attachments all over the gun. You still have the chance to get those fully kitted out guns in other areas of the map though, but your highest overall chance is in the hot zone. If you want to see a map that shows every location and its corresponding loot tier, you can find it right here. Link to that image below. When dropping right at the beginning of the game, don't just drop and fly straight towards your target unless it's right underneath you. Go down hard to gain speed, then straighten out towards your target. Keep doing that over and over and continue gaining speed as you drop down and move towards your target. It'll get you to further away areas faster than just beelining right to your target. As you get closer to your intended landing zone when dropping into the game, it's a good idea to split up between you and your teammates. As you get close, each of you can ping a location in the nearby area to call out to your teammates where exactly you'll be landing. The reason you should do that is so that you're still close enough to stay near each other, but not so close that you'll be stealing gear from one another right when you all land. Divide and conquer, yo. Care packages can contain great loot, and you want great loot. You can tell that a care package hasn't been opened yet if it is emitting a giant blue beam of light up into the sky. If you're heading towards a care package over yonder and the blue beam goes away, well, good news and bad news. Bad news is that the care package was opened and you don't get the loot anymore, but good news, you know now exactly where the enemy is and you might get the drop on them. And